Hi guys! Hi. Chemical yep. Bonding Brothers are back! Now today very sadly is going to be our last video with you guys. <laughs> but it's okay. Now we're going to start off today's lesson by uh, doing a recall of the important intermolecular forces of attraction for simple covalent structures. So first of all we have the IBID interactions, interactions PD, PD, PD interactions and hydrogen, hydrogen bonds. bonds. So William, to do a recap what do we need? We need the Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia! Get it ready! Okay, William. So let's mm. start off with the first interaction. Uh, instantaneous dipole-induced dipole interactions or IDID interactions. Now, please recall that this is the predominant force in non-polar molecules. And how does this force arise? Simply put, uh, at a particular point in time, because electrons are moving, so there might be an uneven distribution of electron cloud, creating a particular dipole in a molecule. This dipole will make a neighboring molecule have a dipole, so this is what we call it induces a dipole in a neighboring molecule. Therefore, there will be an interaction between the delta plus on one molecule and the delta minus on the other molecule. So, this is the basis of ID ID interactions. All right, now if we compare ID ID against PDPD, the main difference is uh, who, who does PDPD interactions with? So, if you see the name, it's a permanent dipole, so the dipole is always there, so it must be for polar molecules, right? Yes, you're right. right. So in an event, you have molecules that are polar in nature, mm -hmm. predominant interaction is going to be permanent dipole. So if you take a look at your notes, uh, we went through an example with you guys previously on HCl. Right, so if you focus on H versus Cl, the delta plus and the delta minus are going to be permanently there, right? Because chlorine is always going to be more electronegative. Mm -hmm. So how do various HCl molecules position themselves? It's always done such that the delta minus of one molecule is aligned next to the delta plus of a neighboring molecule. And what will they have? They will have this permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction between them. And because the interaction is permanent, so we do kind of expect that PDPD to some extent is going to be stronger than IDID provided that the size of the electron cloud of both molecules of concern is about the same. Yep, right. So it's always important to check the uh, amount of electrons that they have to ensure that IDID is approximately constant. Okay, so the third force would be hydrogen bonds. So for hydrogen bond to exist, two criteria must be satisfied. Firstly, the hydrogen atom must be bonded to what we call the full of nonsense, FON. Just like you, huh? <laughs> okay, so the H atom must be bonded to FON because these are the three most highly electronegative elements. Now, on the neighboring molecule, this F or N must have at least one lone pair of electrons that is available to attract the delta plus. Okay, so if you were to look at the diagram over here, so between two molecules, all right, so let's look at the water molecule on the right hand side first. The H atom is bonded to oxygen, so it is delta plus. On the neighboring oxygen atom, there are two lone pairs of electrons, so this lone pair will attract the delta plus of the other H on the other water molecule, and that particular interaction is a very strong interaction called hydrogen bond. Now, when we draw hydrogen bond, we did explain that there is an acronym that they have to follow. Remember? Yes. It's not plan A, it's not plan B, but... Eh, also not plan C leh? It's not plan C eh? Then it's plan what? It's plan D. Ah, plan, plan D, D, guys, plan remember D. plan D. Alright, now, okay. what does plan D stands for? Let's write this down. Okay, so we have plan D. Mm -hmm. Now, what does P stands for? Polarity. Okay, so the polarity. So the polarity will refer to the delta plus and the delta minus. As you can see here, we have to label delta plus and delta minus. Now, what about L? L stands for lone pair. Right, the lone pair. Right, the lone pair on the either N, O or F. So you can see here the lone pairs must always be drawn. Sure, yep. Yeah, what about A? A, uh, A is the arrow, right? Yeah, the arrow. Okay, <laughs> where's the arrow? I don't see the arrow. Well, actually it's here. Can you see? There's an arrow, mm. alright? So we have to label, right, and tell people that this is the hydrogen bond. Yep. And what is N? N is the name of the interaction, which is hydrogen bond. Alright, so over here you can see hydrogen bond. So you have to go name it. And the last thing is D, D for? I don't know, you tell me. A D for dog. Oh, <laughs> got dog man this diagram? Don't know. Don't have lah. So the D must be this uh, green color thing that you highlighted, right? It's the a dotted line. Dotted line. Do dotted <laughs> line. Dotted <laughs> line. All right, dotted no, line. it stands for the dotted line. All right. So these are generally, I would say, the marking criteria, what examiners are looking for when you're drawing hydrogen bonding. So just remember, plan D. When all things fails, plan D will work yes. for hydrogen bond. Okay. So thanks for the quick recap of the three intermolecular forces of attraction. Mm -hmm. Okay. 